Hello and welcome to Demon Interviews episode 181. God, I've been doing this for too long. Um, I'm your host, Springy, and joining us today is our very special guest. Um, I'm Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Cosplay. <laughs> Woo! 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 Well, our first question is, how are you doing today? Do doing great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'm moving my question so I can just like put mm -hmm. it right there. So it actually looks like I'm looking at my screen. Um, have you ever been interviewed like this before? Uh, you, I think not video, but I've done like podcasts and things like that before. So kind of. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so next up is going to be um, that. If, uh, if people are coming from your side of, of the internet, they already mm -hmm. know, and people can assume from 98% of all the people we interview, but you are one of the mythical just cosplayers in general. Uh, so is there any new cosplays you're planning on doing that you're able to tell us about without me giving you a small fee of $5? <laughs> um, I'm working on a new Game of Thrones cosplay for a convention that I'm going to, a Game of Thrones convention I'm going to at the end of the month. Um, that's from House of the Dragon. Um, and it's, I specifically made to be, make one of my friends really sad. So just in case they watch this, I can't say exactly what it is. Um, but I am trying to make my friends very sad with this cosplay from House of the Dragon. Otherwise, I have two Robin Buckley from Stranger Things cosplays left to do for me to have every single screen worn outfit that the character wears. So those are more on the like slowly as I find the pieces or side projects, but mm -hmm. those are just going to be running work in progresses. Awesome. 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 And I promise you, I actually feel like all this is awesome. I just only know awesome and amazing. That's the only two words I know, <laughs> it seems. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the next question very hard hitting, very personal question. Uh, would you rather eat Cheetos or go on a hike? Um, probably a hike, I guess. But I, I don't like Cheetos, and I have asthma, so. Mm. <laughs> but I'd say probably a hike. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, as you said in the beginning, you you go by Yo Yo Cosplay on on the social medias. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose that as your social media handle? Um, well, I, I, it is not even like a good, it's not a deep or good story. It was, I was, I'd been doing cosplay a little bit like casually mm -hmm. for like a year or two. But this was, I was starting to like make friends in cosplay world and like do it a little more seriously. So like, people were like oh, a lot of people make a cosplay specific Instagram account. And I had one coworker who decided that my nickname at work was Yo-Yo because my real name doesn't make nicknames very easily, but he had decided that my nickname was Yo-Yo and he was the only one that wasn't a nickname that I had. Um, but in deciding for uh, an Instagram handle, I didn't want to pick anything specific to one certain like media. I started doing game, um, cosplay more seriously with Game of Thrones, but I didn't want to pick something specifically Game of Thrones in case I want to do other stuff, which I do now. So I guess in my brain, I was like, well, that's a vaguely attached to my real name and also is not a media property. And I guess I was like, I guess yo yo, if I like the joke can be like, oh, I go back and forth between a lot of like very different like medias and cosplays. Like one day I'll post a full like gen, like not drag, but full like masculine makeup, Percy Jackson or Steve Harrington. Mm -hmm. And the next day I'll post like Marjorie Tyrell, who is like, known for being very very girly girl in uh game of thrones so i was like i guess it works <laughs> hey perfect well uh the next thing is the stereotypical youtube thing i have to say which is don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell icon don't forget to follow our lovely guests on all the social media platforms there'll be a way to get to all of them in the description below and if you have any questions polite comments or concerns about probably not concerns just, <laughs> if you have a concern then you should probably contact us to, you know uh other people but um uh, in the comment section below 
And uh, if we ever get back onto the show, we'll ask, ask we'll ask them your appropriate questions. So, yeah. So we're going through these pretty quick. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but the next thing is going to be um. So since in the be- it in the beginning, because that's all I can think about for some reason. <laughs> um, you talked about that you you're planning on going to a con with one of your mm-hmm. planned new cosplays. It, how many different cons have you gone to before? Or yeah. Oh boy. Um. I have pro- like different conventions. Mm-hmm. I'd say two, six or seven different conventions, and then some of those I've gone like multiple times every year, like. Every year, I try to go to C2E2, which is like my local con in Chicago. Um, I go to what used to be Wizard World, but is now uh, Fan Expo Chicago. And then I've gone to a couple out-of-state cons, like Dragon Con I go to every year. Um, went to Hallmat in uh, Orlando for the first time last year, and I'm hoping to go back this year. There's a chance I might be going out of the country for a convention later this year in uh, Canada. So, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, you kind of already said this, but I just wanted to restate it. Is there any cons that you're planning on attending if any of your fans or our fans or both levels of fans want to mm-hmm. come meet you and all that fun stuff? Yeah, the next time I'm going to the smaller convention, I've actually never been before, so I have no idea what to expect from it. It's called Ice and Fire Con. It's a smaller Game of Thrones convention in Ohio. Um, and then out of state cons in the summer, I'll be going to maybe going to um, Montreal Comic Con. Then I will hopefully be going to Dragon Con in Atlanta. And then in the fall, I am. I, I will be at, uh, I don't know how the best word, I'll be a guest, I guess, at um, Forever Twilight and Forks in Washington. And then I'm hoping to go to um, Hall Madigan in December. Awesome. Awesome. You've got a list and you're <laughs> ready to go and people can just go and meet yep. you at any yep. of <laughs> the list. Mm-hmm. Just a scroll and it just rolls. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this is the last con based question, but mm-hmm. what is one of your favorite con memories? Um... I mean, C2E2 in general is always really great um, because it is like a home con for me. And also there was a lot that happened at C2E2 last year that kind of helped, especially in the Stranger Things sphere, give me a little bit of like push and like reach, I guess. Mm -hmm. It was really unfortunate that it happened because it was not a great experience, but I will take the silver linings from it. Um, Otherwise, Dragon Con is also has been a really great con for me. I've been able to meet a lot of people. Especially being in an out-of-state con, I meet a lot of friends that I would have probably never met otherwise if not for going to this convention in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, and getting to do... That one's also... is to I've heard it described as a party con before because like that convention, I've never... I've gone to one single panel. I've never met a celebrity. I've never ever gone into the artist alley or bought merch. I've only just gone to that convention and like done photo shoots and meetups and like hung out with like other cosplay friends. Mm-hmm. So that one... Almost feels less like a con and more like a little mini vacation, except it's very stressful and you're very tired when you leave, but still. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, the next question is going to be, what is the hardest thing about getting into one of your cosplays? Um, I said the hardest cosplays to get into probably are some of my Game of Thrones ones, um, especially... Like, I have a Marjorie Tyrell dress that is completely backless and has, like, structured sleeves. So that one takes specific undergarments and also specific, like, f- like it's just the zippers are hard to reach. The things are hard to reach. Otherwise, um, I used to have a Black Widow suit that has since been, like, deconstructed to be scrapped for parts for other another cosplay. But that one was very different. Not the hardest to get into. Um, I could get in. Getting out was very, very, very difficult. The first time I ever put it on, I did uh, was just unable to get out of it and did think I was just going to be stuck in this Black Widow suit for the rest of my life until someone could cut me out of it. 
but a lot of like any suit that has in like very detailed construction or difficult to reach like zippers is <laughs> one that's hard to get into. Mm. I I can agree with you on that. I've Yeah, spider suits, yeah. I have a spider yeah. suit as well. Uh zippers. <laughs> Curse the zippers. Um so the next question is coming from a past guest, a Mr. Zoom underscore twenty twenty three. It's a very long and very complicated question, but it is bacon question mark. I'm vegetarian, so <laughs> I think for that's a short answer to that. Long answer to the long question is vegetarian. So it's a yes, of course, it seems, correct? <laughs> it's a yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so next one came from the same past guest is peanut butter question mark. Yeah, I'm a big fan of peanut butter. I have the like dietary like palate of a 12 year old boy. So um, peanut butter, banana sandwiches, peanut butter jelly. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, next question. I almost asked you a question twice in a row. But <laughs> uh, who is your biggest cosplay inspiration or inspirations if you have multiple? Um, I think I'm. I'm. I, I'm. I would say that a lot of my cosplay inspirations are like friends of mine. Um. I know getting into the Game of Thrones world, because when I started doing Game of Thrones more seriously, like cosplay more seriously, Game of Thrones is a very detailed costuming department to be your first uh, cosplay to like take seriously. Mm -hmm. So I went from having never made a dress ever or never used patterns or anything like that to making, to recreating Game of Thrones, like dresses that are very detailed, mm -hmm. have a lot of little details and again, difficult uh, structures. Um, so some of my friends, uh, their handles are like Salsa Stark and like Birdie D custom are like, they were, uh, some of my like friends and like inspirations, like getting into Game of Thrones who they had these beautiful dresses and knew how to like create these beautiful detailed patterns and like these very like intricately curled wigs and all these things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so like getting into Game of Thrones, they were some of my bigger inspirations. Um, I'd say now still a lot of just most of <laughs> i could go on and just start listing all of my friends because mm -hmm. every friend cosplay friend that i have is usually i'm able to learn something from um mm -hmm. i know recently one of my friends brie is creating this like beautiful big wig to create for this new cosplay that she's working on and i'm amazed because i'm not usually good at these big style almost like drag style wigs and drag style makeup so again she's inspiring me and in how doing more structured wigs um so all of my friends always have little things that i'm really inspired by and seek to learn from that's really amazing <laughs> there we go i used a different a word for excitement and <laughs> amazement um so next up is going to be um coming from a past guest a shannon crothers uh, you're going to be the star of a movie. Who mm -hmm. would you want your co-star to be? It could be an actor, actress, friend, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And what genre of movie would it be? Um, unfortunately, my answer is going to be laughed at by friends of mine because the first actor, the actor, actress that popped into my mind was Maya Hawk because I've gotten a lot of my Hawk comments, unfortunately, and I. I'm not doing that on purpose. That was just my like first response. Also, I think she's really cool and really fun actress, and I, it'd be really cool to work with her. Um, otherwise, like um, a couple of like friends, I have some friends who have delved more in like acting, like musical theater. So I think it'd also be cool to have like, because isn't it that like the uh, Adam Sandberg and all his like little group of friends, they all just make whatever ridiculous movie, and it's all like the five of them all the time, and mm -hmm. all these. I don't watch them because it's not my style of humor, but the idea of like just being able to like make whatever movie you want with all your friends is also really great. Um, again, like they do more comedy. I don't think I'm that funny of a person. So I think it'd be really fun to do like a horror movie. Um, I really like horror movies. A lot of my friends, my friends, uh, K, um, Corroded K, 
is like a haunt actor and like very very creepy and very good at making the worst noises so i think it'd be cool to do like get a bunch of like friends to, and be able to do like a horrible horrible horror movie <laughs> <laughs> well that just kind of leads me into my next question of who would you be in a horror movie would you be the final survivor killer first to be you know the death and or so on and so forth of stereotypes of horror movies and stuff. I think I'd either want to be like the final girl trope, like the person that's like at the end just covered in blood. Um, Cause I also am a big fan of like FX makeup. I, just, I did that before I did cosplay. And it, there's, it's really fun just being covered in all gore and blood imaginable. Um, or I guess still being covered in gore. I'd want to be the like, whatever, like the possessed monster or whatever. Mm -hmm. whatever the like demon is that would also be fun to be so uh, either the the horrible monster or the final girl one end or the other yeah one end or the other perfect yeah um yeah i i can agree with that 100 <laughs> percent. um but next oh sorry that was coming from a past guest that that mm -hmm. one was coming from a dark mean of the gone forgot to say that i say it now Aha. Uh -huh. Now, um, next up is going to be, um, it, would you keep a pet zombie or would you kill it? Kill it. <laughs> Everyone's seen the horror movies where someone, like, gets bit and then hides it and then, like, it goes badly. So, yeah, yeah it sucks, but you gotta kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... The next question is coming from a past guest once again. Shocking, I know. Um, from a Harley F. Quinn. <clears throat> what are those? I can't remember the uh, the second half of the original joke. I'm just picturing the uh, uh, Black Panther scene where <laughs> with the uh, Shuri and the what are those and his little like Croc shoes, whatever they were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even know there was a second half to that question until people. Is it like, there? I think there is. I, I just like I didn't know it when the when I first wrote down yeah. the question, and I was like, oh wait. <laughs> it's, then people were saying the same thing. I was like, oh, there is just an answer. It's like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so um. Bum, bum, bum. For the people out in in the uh, internet space. Um, what are some of the social medias you usually post on, just so they can start digging? Um, I'd probably post the most on TikTok. So all of my social medias are still like yo-yo dot cosplay. Post the most on TikTok, and then it would be Instagram. There is a Twitter. There is a yo-yo dot cosplay Twitter out there. I don't know the last time that I posted on it. Um, I probably should get back into using it, mm -hmm. especially if. TikTok gets shadow banned to hell. But um yeah, so it's there if you want to find my Twitter, but it's it's a graveyard. But other than that, the main like three, like the TikTok, Instagram. Awesome. And all those will just be in the description. Uh in <laughs> case you need to know how to spell those things. Uh, <laughs> next up is going to be who is your favorite character to cosplay as right now um the stranger things hyperfixation has not yet released me after nearly a year since the last season came out but it is it is robin buckley um this is be before this i probably would have said marjorie tyrell she was my main cosplay for mm -hmm. years um but yeah, since since season four came out, as I said, I'm two costumes away from owning every single screen worn outfit that was on the sh not like recreating every single screen worn outfit that Robin has on the show. So fortunately, it's still Stranger Things, Robin Buckley. Perfect. <laughs> um. Who from TikTok, Instagram, so on and so forth, would you like to do a collaboration with in real life who you haven't done one with before? 
I'm gonna go. Um, I do have a good amount of like people that I am friends with that we have plans for like group cosplays, collaborations. They just all live in far away from me. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been able to, because my friend earlier, I mentioned uh, Brie. Um, I have a friend, uh, <laughs> Odd Cat Ben, who we have a couple of things that we're like, oh, we should do this. He lives in Florida. I don't know when that's going to, any of those are going to happen. Um, a lot of like, oh, most of my Game of Thrones friends I've managed to meet up with by now. But um, a lot of Stranger Things people that I'm like, oh, I wish we could do stuff. You don't live anywhere near me. Um, so I, and I have a friend um, uh, who lives in Australia, who I have a friend who lives in Brazil. Like <laughs> these, these are people I, I would love to do, be able to do stuff in person with one day, but that's unfortunately a little, a little further away to get to. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, my phone was like acting out for some reason. I'm like, you can't. You showed me a random number was trying to call me, and then said it was my mom. Like you're <laughs> using your cell phone. Yeah. Uh, so next up is going to be um, um, since you have said and uh, uh that you that you have done cosplays with other people before. Mm-hmm. Who, in your opinion, uh, ah, sorry. Who, in your opinion, have you done the most collaborations with in the past? Um, I mean, <laughs> recently would be my roommate, um, uh, Golakol on Instagram. We recently, like a week or two ago, spent um, almost twelve hours shooting various TikToks, turning our entire apartment into like different sets. Um, three different cosplays, like three and a half almost, because I had to do like a makeup change halfway through one of them. So recently, my roommate, um, other than that, one of my other friends, uh, Kay, Gordon Kay, we've done a lot of, like we did a lot of stuff like last year at C2E2, this year we were together at C2E2. Um, I have another little group of Instagram friends who we haven't collaborated in person as much, but we've had a lot of like a little echo chamber of all bouncing around the same like cosplay ideas, the same like, at one point, we there was like four of us. We're the only like four people cosplaying this one obscure, not like crack ship from Stranger Things, Buckingham. Mm-hmm. So like, um, but the most recently would be my roommate, and then other than that, in the last like year, one of my friend, one of my friends, Kay. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and because I have, I have to shameless plugging of videos. You can watch mm-hmm. Glow, Glow's video right up here. Yeah. Hopefully, either I'm putting it in right now, or it already popped up, or it's about mm-hmm. to pop up. I don't know. It'll be <laughs> somewhere around here. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, it'll be right when I point it. But, uh, uh, um, but the next question is: What do you think is your is the biggest misconception about you and or your cosplay? Um, I've recently learned that several people that I've met at like conventions have found me intimidating before they got to know me. Mm-hmm. That was very wild to learn because I don't feel like I'm an intimidating person. But several people <laughs> recently was like, oh, no, when I met you, I thought you were very intimidating. Um, and my friends was like, I thought you would like beat me up. Um, that's not true. That's never true. Um, especially if I'm at a con, especially if it's someone that like I that I haven't talked to a lot and you're like trying to like say hi to me at a con or something. If I seem intimidating, I don't mean to be at all, especially at cons. I might just be exhausted or just like out of it, like checked out mentally. Mm -hmm. But apparently friends said that before they got to know me, I was intimidating. And that is, that's just not true. (laughs) I am not an intimidating person. I, I can understand that. There we go. I was trying to find the right word. I was like, what yeah. word in my brain am I going to use today? Is it going to be another A word? Didn't seem like it. Uh, <laughs> um, so to kind of go on, to kind of mix with that, what is one of the best compliments you've ever gotten either online or in person? Um, I know at Hall Matt, um, I got, because I don't usually get recognized that often at conventions. That's not 
a thing that happens. Um, but I did have someone at home that recognized me. And I remember the exact descriptor that they used because it was so funny. Um, was, oh, you're that super sapphic Robin cosplayer on TikTok. And I was like, incredible. That is all I want to get known as, as forever is being a super sapphic Robin cosplayer. <laughs> um, I was like, yes, cool. You know what? This can be my brand. I will just do only sapphic cosplays or like, all, most of my cosplays are either like sapphic characters or like teenage boys. And that's that's all my brand needs to be. <laughs> That's understandable. I mean, you're <laughs> just showing the two Spider-Man suits, either dark characters or not. Yeah. Uh, but the last question on my list is shocking. There's more. <laughs> um, have you ever created a cosplay because either a friend or like a fan online like suggested you should cosplay this character? Yeah. Um. I've done cosplays before of like characters that I didn't really care about um, or was ambivalent about to mm -hmm. like fill a slot in a in a cosplay group. I've always been down to do that. Um, I've made plans with people cosplaying and be like, oh, if ever you need me, media properties that I care that I know very little about, but oh, you need us a, a partner or you need someone to be like a human prop for like your TikTok or for this mm -hmm. photo shoot. Absolutely, I will do that. Um, <laughs> I've also like, and I've always like, I've oftentimes said on social media, like if ever anyone has anything they would like to see me cosplay, especially if it's a media property that like I've posted about. So obviously it's something that I know about. I've always been down. I always want to cosplay new things, but run out of like ideas. The cosplaying Robin was a suggestion from, that was from like real life friends, mm -hmm. but also TikTok people. Cause I cosplayed Steve Harrington more before but I started getting comments both in cosplay and like out of cosplay and just like real life. Like, oh, you kind of look like that girl from Stranger Things. And I, I was like, no, I don't. That's a, that's silly. And then people were like, you should cosplay. You should try cosplaying Robin. And I was like, all right, I'll give it like a shot for like Dragon Con. I'll make like one or two silly little outfits. Mm -hmm. And then I did. And I was like, oh, well, this will be my personality for the foreseeable future now. So, <laughs> yeah, so people can recommend me things. And then sometimes it, it'll completely change my entire future cosplay plans for the next year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, it makes sense to me. I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's all the questions on my list. So I can stop having my phone right there and shaking my screen. Anytime someone tries to text me, um, <laughs> just wipe the notification away. But the next, now we're going to go on to the final four questions. Which the first one is, do you have any questions for me as an individual or about the show in general? I don't think I do. I'm always bad at this this part. Like even like work interviews with like, oh, any questions for me? Suddenly I've forgotten every question, any question I've ever thought of. So I don't think I do. No worries. No worries at all. Um, <laughs> you have like eight ways of contacting me. So if you ever had any yeah. questions ever, you know where to find me. I'll use one of the, one of the ways. Yeah, one of the 80 ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Next time I'm going to say there's 100 ways. Um, but um, next question is going to be, would you ever like to return onto the show either for an interview like this or being on one of the other plethora of things we offer on the show? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Awesome. And that's good because we have you scheduled for 18 more things today. <laughs> Go. Uh <laughs> In 12 different cosplays, and you have five yeah. minutes between each. Go. Yeah. Um, I'll do all, like, seven of my Robin Buckley outfits. There we go. We'll get them all throughout. Quick change. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so the next question is going to be, who would you like to see on the show in the future? Um, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've spent the entire time just name-dropping all of my friends and, like, shouting out every sing like most of my friends. So, I guess any of the people that I've said, I think I've, I think I've like every every question I've answered in some way, shape, or form with a with a friend of mine. So, awesome. Well, I'll I'll pluck through the interview <laughs> and start grabbing some people and randomly sending them messages on Instagram. Um, uh, so, last question is going to be: Do you have any questions for your future guests? 
Um, maybe, uh, especially as a cosplayer, like what their dream cosplay would be. If like time and money wasn't an issue, what would their dream cosplay be? Ooh. Car roars past my window. <laughs> the car agrees. That's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to turn that question back at you. What What would be your dream cosplay if money and time wasn't a factor? I know I have a cosplay that I started probably three years ago. And then COVID hit and I never finished it. Mm -hmm. And now since then, I've improved my sewing skills. So I want to redo a part of it. But I'm making, I've been, I had been working on uh, Marjorie Tyrell's wedding dress. And it is a nightmare dress. There is a hundred thousand little hand rolled roses that I was making. And that's why I got burnt out and stopped because I got tired of making all these roses. Mm -hmm. um, money's not as much an object for it. Time is because it's mm -hmm. so tedious. If I could just be like in a room and be like in a pocket dimension where time will not pass while I make all these goddamn roses. Um, I'd probably be a lot more eager to finish this cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, a lot of times it's like, um, I wish I was better at like foam builds or 3D printing. If I had the time to time and money to properly learn either of those, a lot of like armor builds that I'd want to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say, yeah. So my, my Marjorie Tyrell dress that's been sitting in a box for three years or some like more like cool like plate armor <laughs> awesome well i have to say thank you so much for being here today i highly appreciate it thank you uh, and don't forget to follow our lovely guests on all those social media platforms there'll be a way to get to them in the description below in case you didn't hear me say that 16 times <laughs> um <laughs> And I hope you all enjoyed, and at least I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!